In this video overview, we're going to give you a guide to the create shape function in Aspire. Just quickly to show you how this works, you select a vector object. On the modeling tab under modeling tools, you'll see the icon for create shape from vectors. If we click on it, you have the ability to define a profile and various parameters to control that, which I'm going to go through in a moment. If we hit apply, it'll create the shape for us, which we can see in the 3D view based on the parameters that you've got set. And then you can give this uh, what's going to become a component a name. So if I go ahead and just call this round shape, I would then define the combine mode that that component's going to have with the other components that are already in the part, if we have any. We could go ahead now and just hit close, and I would see that shape is added to the component list and is selected when we come out of the function. Let's go ahead now, select the component and delete it. We'll go back into the create shape form and we'll have a look at some of the different parameters we can set to control the shapes. So we can see how these look when applied to different vectors. I'm going to go ahead and select all three of the vectors that I have in the 2D view so that you can see the results as we work our way through the form. So we said before we have the round, pyramid and plane shape. For the round and the pyramid shape, I'm going to be able to define an angle and the size of that angle, whether positive or negative. I can type in a value or use the slider. If I use the slider here, as soon as I let go, the software is going to update um, the shape that we have in the 3D view. And this is essentially a dynamic menu. So as I make changes to this, you can see that it automatically recalculates that and changes the shape based on the value that I've chosen with the slider there. As I said, it's also possible to type in a specific value and you can apply that by hitting the spacebar on the keyboard. Now the angled shape works in a similar way. If we click on that, you can see that we get the new result for the um, vectors that we have here based on the angle that's in there. And again, we can use this to make positive or negative shapes depending what we're looking to create. The last shape option is for a planar shape. If we click on this, the only option we have here is to set the height of the plane with the base height. Again, I can type in a value or we can use a slider here in order to define some kind of size that we want that plane to be at when it's calculated for the vectors that we have selected. The base height parameter can also be combined with the other shapes in order to create a shape that comes up with a vertical edge and then has whatever profile we've selected on top of that. So if I leave the base height set to 0.25 there and come back to the round shape, we can see that what we get is a shape that comes up 0.25 of an inch because of the base height and then is going to give us whatever dome shape we've got set with the parameters in the angle. I'm going to go ahead and set the base height back to zero, hit space to apply that. And I'm going to come down to the next section of the form here, which allows us to control the height of the shapes. You saw before that what's determining the height of the shape at the moment is just how wide it is and the angle we have set. So the wider the shape is, the deeper it's going to get. Here you can see the round shape is the widest, so it's the highest. The rectangle has the second widest cross section, so it's the second highest shape. And then the T is the lowest because it doesn't have any very wide points. However, even within the shape of the T, you can see the areas that are wider are reaching a higher value than the areas that are thinner, like the cross piece at the top there. If we want to control the height of the shape, we have two options. We can limit to height and scale to height. If I click on limit to height, I'm going to be able to define a value here. If we type in something like 0.2 and hit space, we can see that what's happening is the software is still going to use the angle that we've selected here, but as soon as it's reached the height that I've typed in, then it's going to bottom out or essentially top out, as it would be in this case, and we're going to end up with a plane going across at that depth. So we can see that each of these parts comes up and at a value of 0.2, it's going to just go ahead and become flat. If we want to make that lower, we can use the slider or type in another value. And as I come down, I can see that eventually it's going to flatten out all these shapes as they're all reaching the depth that I have in that box.
The other option here, if we want to just increase that height again, is to, instead of limiting the height, scale the object to a specific height. If we click on Scale to Height, what it's going to do is use the angle to define the shape, but then it's going to scale the highest part of all the shapes we have selected to be this value here, 0.28 of an inch. So at the moment, the highest part of all these shapes is the top of the dome, and all the other shapes will be scaled according to how wide they are based on this being the highest point and their proportionate value to that. So again, if we increase that using the slider, we'll see the shapes get deeper and now the top of the dome is going to be around 0.63 of an inch. The next option in the Create Shape form is the ability to add some kind of angular tilt to the shape. I'm going to go ahead and just close the ones we've been working on, delete the component, and I'm going to select just the rectangle so that we can see the effect of that function. Let's go back into the Create Shape form. I'm going to go ahead and just define uh, a 30 degree angle with no limit and hit Apply. So we can see the shape that that's created as we would expect. Now I'm going to choose the option to Tilt and this allows me to click two points. So if I click Set Anchor, it's going to look for me to click one point that's going to remain on the modeling plane and then a second point that's going to be tilted up by the angle that's set within the tilt part of the menu. So if I click there, we can see that the default 10 degrees is being applied across that shape. Now that still has the profile sitting on top of that. So if I'm to come in here and to push that up, we can see we can still dynamically affect the shape there, even though we've already defined this tilt, which can also be dynamically edited by clicking on the down arrow and using the slider to affect how much of an angle the tilt effect is having. I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck the tilt so that's no longer applied. And I would like to just mention how you can define a specific height for the part based on a combination of the base height and the limit or scale to height. It may be that we want to create an angled shape here and we would like to have say 3 eighths of an inch as a base and but we want the total height of this part to be 3 quarters of an inch, 0.75. The way to define that would be to create our angled shape as we want to. We'd put in a base height of say 0.375 and then we'd click on scale to height and the height here would need to be enough to get from this base height up to the total height. So these two heights are cumulative. So if I put in 0.375 and hit apply, that means the total height of my part is going to be 0.75 of an inch. I have 0.375 of base height and then 0.375 of the angled shape on top of that. Now you may want to create multiple shapes within the create shape form. There are two ways to do that. You can create them so they're all put into a single component and for that you use these options here to combine with the current shape or you can make multiple different components. For instance here we've created this first one so I'll call that angled shape and then if I click start new component it's going to put that into the component tree and allow me to select a new vector for which I can apply a different shape, give a different name Again, if I wanted to click Start New Component, that would create that as a new component and allow me to carry on and create another new component from another shape within the job. What I'm going to do to show you how to use the options to combine with the current shape to put multiple shapes into the same component is to go across to a different session of the software. And we're just going to use these simple vectors here to give you an example of how you can do that. Let's click on the Modeling tab and go into the Create Shape function. I'm going to start by selecting the outline for the face here and we'll just go ahead and give that a 30 degree angle and hit Apply to create our first shape. Let's just take a look at that and if we'd like a little more curvature we can go ahead and keep editing the shape until we're happy with how it looks. Now as soon as I deselect this vector I cannot go back and start dynamically editing that shape again. So it's important that you're happy with the shape you've got before you click the next vector that you're going to use. So here I'm going to come in and select this vector and now I'm going to set again a 30 degree angle here but I have to decide how I want to combine that with the current shape. Do I want to add or merge? 
In this case, because it's going to go on top of the shape I have here, I'm going to choose Add. I can hit Apply. And again, if I want, I can just up the angle there in order to give me a bit more definition until I'm happy with the way that looks. We're going to make a similar shape for the top part of the nose. So we can select that vector. We're going to add that on again and hit Apply. Once more, if there's not enough definition there, we can increase the angle. The next shape I'm going to create here is the mouth, but I'd like the mouth to go into the face. I still want it effectively to be added the shape we have here, but I wanted to dig into that shape when it's added. So we're going to use the combine mode add, but to make it go in, I need to create a negative shape. So I'm going to use the slider to come down and create a negative shape that we can see there. And when the negative is added here, then we're going to see the results that we're getting in the 3D view. I'm going to create a similar negative shape for the eyes. So again, once I'm happy with that, I can click the two vectors for the outlines of the eyes here. And once more, with the combine mode set to add, I can create a negative shape. Again, until I'm happy with the way that looks. Then I can select the eyeballs from the middle here, and this time we're going to go back to making a positive shape again, so we can see that. And again, that's being added to the result we already have from all our other shapes. Finally, we're going to select the vectors for the ears, and we're going to go ahead with the 30 degree angle here. If we say combine with current shape add and hit apply, I can see that's not the result I'm looking for in this case. I want the ears to blend in to the sides of the head. So I'm going to choose Merge instead of Add. So if we click on that, again we can see that automatically updates for me. And once more, if I wanted to, I can control the angles of these to get whatever value I want for the bear's ears. Once I'm happy with the finished 3D model, we could go ahead and just give the component a name hit close, and we can see that all those individual shapes we created have been put into one single component because we went ahead and just carried on creating the shapes using the create shape form without saying that we wanted to create a new component or exiting from that form. And that concludes this overview video on the create shape function within Aspire.